Hello, welcome to the video for what is delta time. So let's go ahead, let me run this quick little example and just show you the basics of what delta time is. If I run this, in the bottom left hand corner you are basically seeing my delta time. My delta time is the time between each rendering frame in a simplified explanation format. Basically it's taking 0 .008 seconds to render one frame and basically what I'm doing is printing this number out to the screen between every frame. If I was to go ahead and pull up my console, which is not cooperating, there we go, and pull up my frames per second, you're going to notice this basically corresponds to 8.33 milliseconds or 120 frames per second. Your delta time is tied pretty much hand in hand with your frames per second. So if I was to change my max frames per second to something like 60, you're going to notice my delta time doubles and my frames per second cut in half because, again, they go hand in hand. And of course, if I was to change this even lower to like 5, you're going to notice I now have a much lower frames per second and a much higher tick time. Let's go ahead and change this back to 60 for our example. And let's run through why we want to use the delta time and what it's primarily used for. So I have an example here. For the most part, you can skip this first part. All I'm doing here is saving my delta time, so we have it for reference later. I'm creating a current timer variable, which is basically just adding my delta time to itself, so I can keep track of time for our example. Then I'm setting a display with our current time, as well as our delta time, which is what you saw on the screen. And then if I've gone ahead and pushed my button, we're going to go ahead and take an action. So let's run through my first little breakdown here. All I'm doing here is taking my image, adding 1 to the x value, and then setting the position. So basically it's going to move across left to right one pixel at a time every frame. Now I have it set to go my move distance of 100 pixels. So if we run this and I hit my button, you're going to know start at 300, end it at 400, and it took 1.7 seconds to go. Now, this is directly tied into our delta time, like I said, our frames per second. So if I change our max FPS to 120, then I go ahead and run this again, you're going to notice it took roughly half as much time because we're running it twice as many frames per second. Now, one of the issues that we're going to run into is if I was to take and change this to a lower frames per second, let's say our player has a less powerful machine. Let's say they're only getting about 24 frames per second. Assuming I can get this to cooperate this time. There we go. And I run this. You're going to notice it takes much, much longer in order to actually get to our goal. So if you're relying on something to happen in a certain time frame or to, to basically be the same across different machines, you can't rely on your delta time to move your character. You want to use something else like a, a timeline, which is actually based on a fixed timeline based on time. However, you can use other methods to use the delta time and to use your tick in order to smoothly move something and make it basically frame rate independent. And that is one of the goals and one of the good uses for the delta time. So if I was to stop this, which my keyboard is not cooperating today. Okay, so if I was to go ahead and stop this, let's go ahead and hook this up to my other section here. Now my other section, which I need to clean up a little bit here, is basically the same thing, except instead of adding a fixed value, what I'm doing is taking our distance and our time, which is our goal. For example, my time is set to 5 seconds with a distance of 100, which means I want, no matter what, no matter what frames per second we have, I want this to move 100 units in the X over 5 seconds. So I figure out what my percentage of that is, and then I multiply that my, by my delta time. So that way if my delta time's lower because of a high frames per second, I'm going to move less. And if it's higher due to a low frames per second, I'm going to move more 
but the end result is I'm going to move the same distance over time. So if we go and run this and we hit play, I'm going to go ahead and move over five seconds my 100 units. And that's with 24 frames per second. Let's say we change this up to, let's double this, assuming I spelled that right, which I did not. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Let's double our frames per second. Now under our old system, it would take half as much time. If we go ahead and run this again, you're going to find it's going to move the exact same distance in the exact same amount of time. You can ignore rounding errors here. I'm using nearly equal just to make sure we're close enough. But it moved 100 pixels in 5 seconds. That's the same thing. I could go ahead and bump this up even more. Let's, let's bump our max frames up to 200. Now we're talking, you know, 7 milliseconds. I'm getting 130. I have no frame lock at this point. I'm getting about 130 frames per second, 7 millisecond time. We run this. You're going to say the same thing. Even though I have a much lower frames per second. Sorry. Delta time and a much higher frames per second, we're still moving the same distance over the same amount of time. And this is what's great about it. So now you don't have to worry if your player has a fast computer or slow computer. You can rely on things having the same values independent of the frames. And the nice thing is I can go in here and let's say I want to make my move distance to be 400 and I want my time to be 3 seconds. Well, I just change the values. I don't have to worry about calculating based on how much time it's going to take or frames or ticks. I run it again. I let it go. It's going to go ahead and move my distance, which was 400 frame, 400 pixels, over 3 seconds. And that's irregardless of my frames per second. I'll go back into here. Just to illustrate, we'll move this down really low to 5 frames per second and hit play. And yes, it's jumping because we only have 5 frames per second. But we're still moving the same 400 pixels over 3 seconds, which is what we designed it to do. So the player, despite how many frames per second they have, are going to see the same end result. They may not get the same experience, obviously. They have lower frames per second. But the point is they're going to get the same result. So that is what our delta time is. Our delta time is basically, and let me bump my frames back up so I can actually use my editor again. There we go. There we go. So our delta time is, again, it's the time between each frame in seconds, usually milliseconds. You usually get it from your event tick, which will be in each blueprint. In terms of usage, you want to try and limit the amount of ticks that you use in your blueprints just because it gives overhead. Every tick that runs means every frame this is going to fire. No ifs, ands, or buts. So one thing to consider is inside your blueprint, it's blueprint itself, you have your defaults in your blueprint. Not inside your UMG blueprints, but inside your actors. If you look over here, you have the option to start with tick enabled. Or you can uncheck it and start with tick disabled. You can also adjust in the newer versions of Unreal Engine the amount of time it takes for the tick itself. That way it will be something other than every frame. So you could kind of set this up as an automatic timer for the tick on this actual blueprint itself. For the most part though, try not to use ticks unless you need something that's going to run every frame. Something like physics or some other calculation you may want that for. Other than that, you can use a timer as a fake tick. Basically, just fire the timer every, you know, tenth of a second or whatever interval you need. But this basically is what delta time is. It is just the time between each frame in a float value. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.